Okay, so South Park and censorship. Um, wow. It hasn't happened a lot. The, the guys have been able to get away with quite a bit, quite a bit of, uh, of indecent and profane uh, material on, on its shows. But surprisingly, most of the censorship in South Park has actually come from um, religious religious groups, um, primarily, you know, a lot of pressure from the parents, television council, but a lot of uh, pressure from people of specific religious denominations, uh, the, you know, people who are Catholic, um, obviously, um, you know, Muslim groups, um, etc. So, um, but I think, like, really, the, in general, like, all of the censorship that South Park has experienced has been self censorship by Comedy Central, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, and this is Comedy Central trying to keep advertisers happy, trying to keep board directors happy, or protecting itself uh, from violence, you know, or threats, threats of violence, and that's a, that's a major, major, major part, but it's mostly about keeping advertisers happy. Um, controversy over over content and censorship, you know, it, it, it doesn't really behoove. Um, it's not really great for advertisers, depending on what the, con what, the content, what the content is, because your brand gets associated with um, the content. But, you know, primarily uh, Comedy Central has censored, um, you know, Matt and Trey for its portrayal of the Prophet Muhammad, so that's been, that's been censored, uh, of the Pope, um, and there's been light censorship uh, with Tom Cruise uh, in the Church of Scientology, but th there's different ways to kind of like think think about about that, and we'll talk about that when we talk um, when we talk about uh, Scientology and Tom Cruise in a few weeks here. Okay, but South Park's rarely, rarely been censored. They're obviously advocates of of free speech, um, and they take it to to the max. You know. Uh, and so I think that's important to note is that, you know, it's the guys really will push back to Comedy Central about censoring its content. But, you know, it's the standards and practices department at a network that decides what is arable and what isn't. OK, so we're going to watch Good Times with Weapons. This is from 2004. Um, this aired one uh, month after Nipplegate. Um, I don't know, it's probably hard for you to remember Nipplegate, but this is when um, Justin Timberlake uh, exposed Janet Jackson's uh, one of her breasts during a Super Bowl halftime performance, which is live, no delay, totally uncensored, and we'll talk about that in, in, in a second. But as we'll see in this episode, this episode really focuses on two things in American society. Uh, 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 nudity and sex, you know, obscene material, and violence. And the fact that Americans are perfectly content with violent, graphically violent material, yet nudity is a problem. Seems a little bass backwards um, to me, right? So we're totally cool with gore and violence and entertainment, but not cool at all with nudity. Okay, so this episode plays on that, specifically with the fact that the boys are ninjas, um, they hurt butters, and they try to cover it up. Okay, I don't want to give away too much, but, you know, just give you the general sense. And then at the end, Cartman uses his superpowers, which are invisibility, which he's not really invisible, and he walks across the stage naked on the Antique Roadshow. And then at the end, the last moment, you have all the parents in outrage, not about Butters catching a ninja star to the eyeball, but to the fact that Cartman was nude uh, on stage. So again, like this concept that within this society, you know, American society, there's no, no backlash against violent content anywhere. Using guns on network TV cop shows or wh whatever, whatever it is, that stuff's okay. But 
a nipple. A nipple. It's crazy. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so the wardrobe malfunction um, was in the uh, Super Bowl that the New England Patriots won. Um, I actually missed it because uh, it was halftime. I never watched the halftime shows, so whatever. Um, but, you know, you see, you see here uh, Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake, you know, I'll try to find a video clip too, you know. Um, you know, they claimed it was a wardrobe malfunction, but it was to totally planned. But, you know, um, the thing about Nipplegate is that, you know, guess who suffered from it, right? Janet Jackson. Her career um, suffered and immensely. And Justin Timberlake went on to, you know, continue to do whatever he wants to do. Um, you know, and so she took a lot of brunt, the brunt of the blame and punishment um, from Nipplegate. Now there's obviously, you know, uh, <clears throat> racial dynamics that are clearly in, involved in this and Justin Timberlake not receiving some of the same um, punishments essentially. Um, but I mean, here, here's the deal. We see, you know, Janet Jackson's nipple for half a second. Okay, half a second. The FCC got a half a million indecency complaints because of it. A half a million. CBS, who was airing the Super Bowl that year, got fined $550,000. Okay. Now, to put that into perspective, that whole year, okay, the FCC had only doled out a total of $8 million in uh, indecency fines. So, you know, uh, a sixteenth of that plus uh, was because of Nipplegate, okay? And typically, uh, an indecency violation will yield you $125,000 to $325,000. Um, excuse me, $27,000 to uh, $325,000. That's like, and three twenty-five dollars is on like the very high end of indecent material. But since this is network television, um, not during safe harbor time, uh, you know, CBS got, got pounded. Now, the interesting thing is that because of this, Janet Jackson, um, her music, um, content, music videos, everything was banned from Viacom and CBS. Now, the thing is this, Viacom, okay, Viacom owns Comedy Central, Viacom owns VH1, BET, in MTV. This is 2004 when like music videos were still kind of kind of a thing. So all of her content was banned from from Viacom. Now if you remember back to week one or two, um, you know, CBS and Viacom share um, an owner, a primary owner via primary uh, majority shareholder uh, Sumner Redstone. Um, so that's why, you know, CBS got docked. They, uh, you know, the punishment from CBS, whatever, you know, but the punishment from Viacom is, is, was major. Um, and Clear Channel and Infinity Broadcasting also would no longer air her music, okay, um, which is crazy. Um, those are some, most of the major uh, United States radio radio stations would not play Janet Jackson music, okay? Uh, Viacom paid three and a half million dollars in indecency uh, complaints. Uh, you know, so, so a lot of money was, uh, was doled out. Um, but, you know, I mean, was this news? Was like this a big deal? Like a nipple, a shielded nipple for half a second? Indecent? during like the most violent American game, like sports game that you can watch where people, you know, more or less die, you know, um, from brain damage, you know. But really what, the, what happened from this was like, oh shit, 
Um, because the fines were so heavy, because the repercussions were so heavy to Janet, um, what you had is, you know, the FCC started, FCC started going in on people um, and networks started to really self-censor because, you know, every, everybody you know, was afraid because they didn't want to have to deal with all the complaints. They didn't want to have to deal with the fines. They didn't want to have to deal with the repercussions of this stuff. So, um, you know, content got very clean for, for, for a while. Uh, a few years back, uh, MIA... She did a halftime performance where she flipped the bird. Um, that also yielded a bunch of indecency complaints. Okay, whatever. So let's watch this episode. Just focus on, you know, how they really tie it all in, tie it in with Nipplegate, how they tie it in with, um, you know, indecency and, you know, American fixation on, on it, you know, on this type of content versus its acceptance of violence. <laughs> 